In this video, I'm going to compare Jenny AI to Yomu AI. I have several videos on this channel talking about Jenny AI. Yomu AI is a newer AI research writer that may be interesting to a lot of people. It's specifically made for academics and researchers for like submitting journal articles and things like that. So I want to compare these two and there are so many different things that these two programs are doing. So I'm not going to compare every single thing. I'm really going to pick on three things that I think are important for researchers and academics. The first one is going to be how well can it continue writing? So if you're experiencing writer's block and you want to use AI to be like, what should my next sentence be? Things like that. I'm going to compare that. I'm going to compare how well can it take text that are written more colloquially and convert it into um, better written academic text. So what you would more expect to find in a journal article. And then the third thing I'm going to compare is citations between the two. Um, if you're interested in more comparisons later on, let me know in the comment below and I can look into that as well. I do have discount codes for both of these sites, so I will leave both of them below. I think that each one of these could be beneficial to certain people and you may want to choose one over the other and that is perfectly fine. So I'm going to leave both links and both discount codes in the description below. So to get started, on my left, I have Yomu AI. This is actually made by the same people who created Sourcely. And then on my right, I have Jenny AI. This is an AI writer that's been around a lot longer than Yomu, and so it does have a few more features than Yomu does. So first, I'm going to um, pretend I'm writing a, a research article, and I'm gonna go with the topic of one of my previous research articles. So this is kind of the topic of my second published research paper, and I'm literally just gonna copy this word for word, paste it into Jenny AI. So I'm not doing anything like changing the words or anything between these two. So I'm gonna start with looking at how well does it auto-generate the next sentence or auto-complete. So both of these now have the ability to do this manually. So for example, if you come up to settings in Jenny AI, you can turn off autocomplete. I like to do this because as a researcher, if I'm constantly seeing my next sentence generated by AI, it can be really easy to lose my voice, especially if you have not already outlined your writing, which is what I always suggest you do with working with any AI tool. Generate your outline first and generate an in-depth outline and then use AI to help you overcome those writer's blocks in order to be able to complete, convert your outline into a research article. So with this, I turn autocomplete off. So up here the, in Jenny AI settings, you can see I have autocomplete turned off here. And in Yomu up here, you can see autocomplete is turned off. In Jenny AI, you can hit Control J to generate the um, next statement. And in Yomu, you can hit Shift Tab by, and it will do the same thing. It'll generate your next statement. So I'm going to come out. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to see based off my title, how well does it generate my first sentence? So over here, I'm just going to hit command J and I'm just going to hit continue writing. And then in here, I'm going to do shift tab and allow it to write that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit tab just so that it will actually um, enter in. So let's look at this. When analyzing steroid isomer separations and mis mixtures, using eye mobility spectrometry with metal adduction, it is important to consider the additional dimension of separation that can be provided by complementing the mass spectrometry system with eye mobility spectrometry. By utilizing IMS eye mobility spectrometry techniques such as drift tube eye mobility, traveling wave eye mobility, um, this is called FAMES. It is important to further differentiate isomers and, or isobaric compounds within mixtures. That is a lot. This first statement kind of feels like it's circling around. It's, it's not really saying anything. The second statement is talking about the different types of IO mobility um, and how it can create different isomers or isobaric compounds. I would not write a research article using this. Um, personally, I would start more with the why of my paper. That's what I talk about a lot on here. And this is why I think it's so difficult because, and I'm gonna do more, another one later on where I actually create a paragraph and I have it finished that paragraph for me. But overall, just off the title, I don't think it's generating really good content. 
For Yomu, it says the analysis of steroid isomer separations in mixtures using eye mobility spectrometry with metal addition is a widely used technique for the analysis of steroid hormones. Okay, steroid hormones are present in nature at a variety of levels of concentration and therefore represent a challenging area for the analysis. So this second sentence here is probably where I would get started. I would start talking about steroid hormones, what they are, and um, the fact that they are at very low levels in nature and still need to be quantified, um, and therefore they present challenging. That would kind of be my first paragraph. I would break that out into more of a first paragraph. The first sentence there, I feel like that's how we are taught to write introduction sentences and like, high school, right? Like you start with a thesis statement. But when you're writing research articles, you don't generally start with a thesis statement. You start with the why someone should be interested in that. Um, but since they've already read your title, they already know what your thesis statement is, right? Your title really should be your thesis statement. And then um, you can get more into your study that way. So I think this one, two here is a little odd to me. I think that is the AI was trained to have citations, and so that's it trying to show citations. So I'm gonna delete that out. So overall, for me to fix this, I would remove this and start with this. So steroid hormones are present in nature at varying variety of levels of concentration. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I would say are present I would say steroid hormones are biologically important compounds that exist at low concentrations. Therefore, while analyzing steroids is essential for medical diagnosis, it presents, I'm gonna say, well, analyzing steroids is essential for medical diagnosis There are extensive challenges due to the low biological concentration and the high levels of isomers, of steroid isomers with different biological functions. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it over here, and now we're going to see how well does it generate the next sentence for me. So we're going to do Command J there and hit Continue Writing, and then we're going to do Shift Tab here. Shift Tab. And go ahead and tab that in. Okay. So this is steroids can be separated using either liquid chromatography or grass chromatography. I actually think that's not a bad direction to go to talk about what are the known methods and then jump into what IA mobility has done. So I don't think that's particularly a bad direction. Again, I would probably reframe that into broadening it out a little bit more. Over here, it gave me a much longer response. So it says, researchers and scientists have long been facing challenges in separating steroid isomers, which are crucial to medical diagnoses due to their different biological functions. I think this is a little bit of restatement. So I might take like, um, this, this seems more like a way to rephrase this sentence up here, but let's keep going. The existing chromatographic te techniques used for separating steroid isomers are not readily available in mass spectrometry imaging. That, I understand why AI might think that this belongs here because that is an issue in mass spectrometry imaging. You can't hook it up to chromatography. 
but that's not really where this paper is going. I would say like it's not as readily available or like talk about other challenges here. So again, even with AI, you really do need to know your field in order to be able to write good papers and be able to edit this. So I would edit this. And then to address this issue, recent studies have demonstrated the potential of utilizing eye mobility spectrometry in combination with MSI. That's actually true. This paper just isn't talking about mass spectrometry imaging for separating steroids and determining their localization. IMS, particularly techniques such as drift tube eye mobility and traveling wave eye mobility, provides an additional dimension of separation, enabling differentiation of isomers or isobaric. So I like the general structure of Ginny AIs. Again, you can see that they're both going the same direction, right? This one is talking about what um, has previously been done, and this one's also talking about what's previously been done. This one just also bridges back to eye mobility spectrometry, where this one doesn't. Now, if I kept hit, hitting Shift tab here, um, so then, so this is now going into what GC and LC. Again, I think these one and two are probably just citations that AI thinks it needs. Um, so GC is the most commonly used technique for steroid isomer separation. However, it is slow and has limited range. So that's again, uh, an issue that I could then plug into this one. LC is faster and more sensitive technique. However, it cannot separate steroid isomers at the same molecular weight. That's actually not true. Um, so LC can separate. It just doesn't always do it as well. Certain isomers can separate through LC really easily. Others, you need really, really long LC times to be able to do it. So I think this they're both going the same direction. They're just saying it very differently. Um, and again, I think this is helpful when you are hitting writer's block and you're like, okay, how do I connect to the next thing? Where do I go next? Or how can I phrase something? I don't think it's as helpful to like write your whole sentence, right? Like both of these I would edit, I would reword, I would not use exactly as it is. So that's overall a kind of comparison between both of these with generating a, with generating language. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to write a sentence in both of these that's really written much more colloquially. So I'm going to write it like if I was talking to someone who doesn't understand my field and I want to have it be able to make it sound more academic, more like something I would put in a research article. So to do this, I'm going to describe how I am mobility works. So that like I'm this probably isn't like the best way just because I do write academically a lot that it feels really weird to write this way, but this is a pretty not great way, right? Like I would change a lot of the words in this, but that's the point of this. I wanna see how well does the AI actually do it. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm gonna copy it and paste it over here. So if I highlight this on Yomu, we're gonna use what's called Academize. So we're gonna click that there and on Jenny AI, we're going to come to AI commands. We're going to do paraphrase and then academically. So that's kind of how to do the same thing. So this, you can see this automatically replaced the suggestion over here. This, we can replace the suggestion. I'm going to click insert below. I do like that Jenny AI has this feature to be able to insert below instead of always replacing what you wrote. So let's start over here with Yomue. I am ability spectrometry is a technique utilized for the separation of gaseous ions through their transport through their transport through a gas-filled device. Okay, by subjecting ions to gas flow, varying in magnitude and direction, the ions experience opposite forces, resulting in their differential transit times through the device. This results in the selective separation of ions based off distinct structural, dimensional, and electrostatic characteristics. I think that went way too far. Like this is like reading one of those really, really dense academic articles where you don't even understand what it's trying to say. So yes, that looks like it's using the right words, but I think you're losing the message and how it tried to academically enhance. Over here, we have ion mobility spectrometry is a method for separating gas phase ions by passing them through a device containing gas, which then provides resistance as the ions travel through it. As a result, ions of varying shape and size, shapes, sizes, and charges take different amounts of time to pass through the device. 
So I think this, which helps provide resistance at the, as the ions travel through it, I think that overall keeps the message a little bit better. It's a little bit simpler to understand. It does make it sound a little bit better, right? Um, passing them through a device instead of pushing an ion through a device that has gas in it containing gas, right? Like it's doing more word choice changes where this is doing a lot more massive changes, like varying in magnitude and direction. I don't even know what that means exactly. Like, I think that's referring to the ions maybe, I'm not sure. So overall, I would probably go with Jenny AI's um, ability to write more academically. Again, with this, I would probably change this, but that's more knowing the field, right? Like in iMobility, we talk about collisions, right? Because we calculate something called a collision cross-section. So we would typically say, which then provides or resistance as the ion collides with the gas um, traveling through it or something like that. But again, AI is not going to know that that's how we usually talk about these things. So I think it does a decent job. If you're really struggling and you know how to say it and not the way you wanna write it, I think this could be really helpful to get the words out and then be able to help you edit it in the future. So then finally, let's talk about citations. So I'm gonna come up and use one of their existing. So let's use something similar. So I'm gonna choose the very first sentence of both of these. I'm gonna use AI and I'm gonna go to cite. So Yomu is powered by Sourcelab for their citations. So you can see here's their citations here. Um, so here's like one talking about collision cross sections that would have basic information in it. For me, I would rather have a review. So this second one here, this one is a review. You do have filters up here that you can choose. Um, again, this is really similar to uh, Sourcely. So you can choose more filters if you want to do that. I would be looking probably more for reviews here and older reviews as well. So you can see there's a lot of different ones. Some of these are definitely related to IM Ability. This first one is not. Um, this one is... This one is a review recommendation for reporting IM Ability mass spectrometry measurements. Um, again, I would probably go a little bit older into like a basic IM mobility review. That's like a lot of us know, like the IM, we all have like Bibles in our, um, field, like the main paper that everyone reads in that area. So I, that's what I would cite here. And I'm not seeing one of those appear, but that doesn't mean that these are necessarily really bad ones. I think some of these are really not necessary. Like this one might include that information. I don't think it's the greatest one. The best one out of this list would be this one, since it is a review um, that I would potentially do. So if we come over here, I'm going to take, and I am using their, like the ones that they used AI to actually create, just so that it's not biasing the way that I write it. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to hit site. You can also do this by the key of just the at symbol. So I'm going to hit site. So what this does allow you to do is it generates a search for you. So you can see I mobility spectrometry for steroid isomer separation. I find that an odd search because we're not talking about steroids in this. But the nice thing here is I can actually um, edit this. So I can actually just remove this to get specific things for what I want now. You can go to journals. So this would kind of be the equivalent of this um, powered by Sourcely citation over here. Ginny AI also has the ability to, you can just upload PDFs. So you can have your library here with all of your PDFs in it. So if you wanna take from your Zotero, throw it into Ginny AI and then be able to find citations that way, you can actually do that. Yomu does not have that ability yet. I know that it's something that's in their roadmap to develop. They do not have that yet. So over here, looking at the actual journals that they provide, all of these, like the ones that it gives, I just don't, I don't love. I don't love any of these. I didn't mean to add that citation, but I don't really love any of these. If I go to websites, what I found is the websites tend to be a little bit better. Um, so like this, chapter one, I am ability mass spectrometry, 
right? Like this is probably what I would be using. Um, I am mobility spectrometry, fundamental concepts. But the thing is, is I don't want to click this ad citation because that's adding it as a website. What I'm actually citing is a journal article that's been found on a website. These are the ones that I would do. So then how can I get manual citations in? So if I, let's click open a new tab. So you can see this is available for both. You can just click add citation in here for both. Very similar setup. So if I click open a new tab, now I can look at what it has this information in here. This is the type of article that I would cite. So I can click cite and it's going to give me the cite information up here. Let's get the bib text. So it gives me the bib text here. So let me open up that bib text. So here is what it is actually giving me. It's giving me this information. So now if I want to add this as a manual into Jenny AI, I can. So I can add a custom citation and then I have to click. This was a book. So we're gonna, so it doesn't actually have that. It has miscellaneous. So we would do that. We would copy the book title, um, the access date. It doesn't have in here. You can put like today's date generally will work. So let's put the 28th um, publication date. It has the year in here and the month. So let's just do 11. Okay, so that you have to kind of go back and forth. So this was in 2021. So I have to go back to 2021 and click November and we're just gonna do November 1st. And then you'd have to add the authors manually. So there's only one author here. So um, family name would be the last name. So put all of this information in here. And then this has the URL as an identifier. So we can copy this, this is the DOI URL. So we can put that in here and we're gonna click save. So now it's added that one in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one so you can see I can just click that and click remove. So it's added this one in. Right now, if you go to this, you have APA, MLA, Harvard, or IEEE as your options for citations. So if I'm gonna go with APA, I wanna move that to the back. The other thing you can do here is you can switch between narrative or parenthetical, so, or in-text citations. So if you're writing and you're going to say, Reister et al found that, that would be a narrative. If you're writing a sentence and then you're citing it at the end, that would be your in-text citation. So if you wanna keep that, it will switch it. You can see it says um, in APA, this is how you would write it. Um, parenthetical, it switches back to this. So you, they do, both of those actually have that function. So now let's do the same thing with Yomu. How can we get, if we don't like anything that it's giving us, how can we get a manual citation? So down here it says add custom citation. And the difference with this is it, you can actually do something called add with AI. Basically, if you have the bib text, you can just copy the bib text and paste it and click add with AI. And what it does is it parses that bib text to then pull out the information. So this is taking the AI a really long time to work with it. So I'm just gonna input, I'm gonna switch it to add manually and I'm gonna input in the information here from the bib text. So you can't always add a manual citation, um, though it might not be the funnest to do. We're just gonna, Even though this is a book, it's gonna cite it like a journal, um, which would be something you'd probably want to fix afterwards. And right now it looks like, oh, you have to press enter here, okay. So we would do, oh, Larry, Bellica, and then press enter, and that's gonna add that name. And so make sure you're pressing enter after that, and then we save. So there it is um, down there, and it has your references down there. While this didn't work great on the day of filming this, um, it does work better now. So if I do um, highlight this, I can say use AI, I can go to site, I can click add custom citations, and then I can just paste in my bib text file and click add with AI. After a few seconds, it enters in all the information and all I have to do is click save and now it is entered in here. So it does actually work. Um, it just wasn't working uh, very well on the day that I did that. So overall, those are the 
two different main um, AI, re AI writers that are applicable for research right now um, that are more generative AI as you're writing. Again, in the description below, I will have links and discount codes to both of these if you are interested in using them. And I can always do more comparisons or more in details into either of these. If you have any tutorials that you wanna see or comparisons, leave me um, a comment down below as well. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.